Hey what's up guys this is Fuad and welcome to my very first RC related video in my channel. For the past couple of years I've been always working on rubber band powered models and I gotta say those were really good times. Now I just wanna emerge to the next level maybe do something with RC now. So I'm just gonna you know briefly talk about all the basic electronics that are required to make a basic 3 channel RC plane. So let's talk about each and every component. Now this is your radio transmitter and you're just gonna basically control your plane with this machine and this is gonna send signals to a thing called receiver. This receiver is going to receive the signals that you're gonna control with the transmitter. Now right now you might have a question. With what transmitter is my receiver going to bond together? Now basically the transmitter you're gonna buy, the package is going to include the receiver it's gonna work with. And for a beginner, I'm also a beginner, Flysky tends to be a really good model, so you can go for a Flysky transmitter with a Flysky receiver. Now I'm going to talk about the motor. This is basically your source of thrust and it's a pretty powerful little engine. This is a 1000 kV brushless outrunner motor. And in your transmitter, this left stick is going to be the throttle and it's going to determine the speed of which your motor is going to spin. Now, this motor is just not going to work like that. You will need something else that will control the speed of this. You will need a brushless ESC. This ESC stands for an electronic speed controller and this basically determines how fast your motor is going to work. And as you can see, this is a little servo and what servos really do, they just move like that. And these are used for um, controlling the direction for your airplanes or the elevation. But I'm just talking about simple terms. Like servos can also be used for landing gears or ailerons. Now let's talk about the battery. This is a 1500 mAh LiPo battery and it's 11.1 volt. Now for motors that are around 1000 kV or 1400 kV, batteries from 1300 mAh to around 2200 mAh seem to work pretty well. Now I don't want you to make this mistake. Do not take your battery and plug it right onto the third channel. What this will do, it's going to burn your receiver. To make sure you're providing enough volt, you're going to use your ESC. Basically what you're going to do, you're going to get your ESC and you're going to stick it to your battery and you're going to have this wire coming out and this wire is going to go to the third channel. And as you can see, the receiver has started to glow. Now this ESC is going to give the receiver the right amount of voltage from the battery. Now the remaining three wires from the ESC are going to connect to your motor. There's one thing I would like you to keep in mind. As you can see the ESC has a red wire and a black wire. The battery also has a red wire and a black wire. They have to connect in such a way so that both the sides have the same color. As you can see there's red red and there's black black. Now that's how you have to make sure you connect your, um, you solder your T connectors in the right way. So if you have a wrong color from either side, you're either gonna have your ESC or your battery burn out from the inside. Finally, it's time for us to connect our servo to the receiver. I'll connect this to channel one. Now with our required components connected to the receiver, we are ready to test them out. So I'm gonna turn my transmitter on If you heard that sound, this shows that the motor is ready. So now I'm just going to give you a demonstration. This is the throttle. I'm going to gently push it forward. And as you can see that the motor is spinning pretty nicely. And as I'm putting the throttle even higher, the motor starts to spin even quicker. Now with your motor and your propeller, if they're not generating the wind the right direction you're preferring to, out of the three wires, you can take out any two of them and then just stick them and just exchange the wires. And what that will do, it's just going to change the direction of the motor spinning. Now I can sense that the wind's thrusting upwards. Now the servo is connected to channel one of my receiver. So if I use this um, right stick, and if I try to move it, you can see that the servo is working pretty nicely, whereas the other components have no effect on the servo. Now if I take this servo wire and take it out and stick it to my channel 2, 
it's gonna work as my elevator and as you can see it's having no effect it's working as my elevator now if you stick to a 1000 kV motor a battery that's around 1500 mAh or 1800 mAh works pretty well it could also work with a 1300 mAh or a 2200 mAh and the ESC you're gonna need is around a 30 ampere ESC you could also use a 25 ampere but it's just best to stick to the safe side if you prefer to have a powerful motor, a more powerful motor, you could go on with a 1400 kV motor. But that 1400 kV motor is going to take out more energy from your battery. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend you to go on with a 1000 kV motor and you're going to need a 9 to 10 inch prop. But if you take a 1400 kV motor, you're going to need a smaller prop that's around 7 to 8 inches. So guys, these are the basic RC components that you're going to need to make an RC plane. If you're a beginner like me, you can go ahead and make an RC airboat instead of an RC plane as that's how you're going to have it a bit more easier and you can test out the electronics and get more used to it. So guys, that was my short video briefly talking about the components that you're going to need for an RC airplane. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions or any comments, leave them out in the comment sections below. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time.